Welcome back. Now the Nigerian government says schools across the country will reopen on Monday, January 18th. The Education Ministry says the decision was taken after wide consultations with state governors and stakeholders. Last week, the Education Minister had suggested that the planned reopening of schools may be put on hold due to rising COVID-19 cases. Nigeria is currently battling a second wave of the pandemic. It has recorded over 1,360 deaths since the pandemic started. More than 100,000 cases of the virus have been confirmed in the country since February last year. Now joining me to discuss this is Dr. Izekiel, a public health physician and a member of the Association of Public Health Physicians for an expert view on this. Good afternoon, Dr. Izekiel. Good afternoon. Yes. Now, is the announcement for the schools to resume a fact-based or rather economic consideration? Um, I think it's a, a bit of both. Um, we all know that children have been at home for a very long time, and um, there are obviously um, downsides to this. Parents mm -hmm. are anxious, most parents do not enjoy homeschooling or you know, having the children at home for long hours. Of course, when you look at parents who go to work and things like that. So the schools are places where these children can go to learn and obviously stay. And of course, we we think of other things that could be um, harmful for and um, detrimental to children's health for being at home for so long, such as sexual abuse. Um, and different forms of abuse that could occur when children have been at home for so long. So yes, it's a bit of um, um, social economic. It has a bit of social economic aspect to it, yeah. and of, of course, um, science based in in terms of the fact that um, we yeah. put in place um, preventive measures, uh, prevention strategies so that kids can actually go back to school safely. So I would say it's a bit of hope. Yeah, now we have seen um, in different countries during the after the first wave of the coronavirus, obviously, a lot of schools open. Now, I think what parents are wondering right now is, has the government or is the government willing to make any plans to put in place measures to protect the children or teachers as, you know, the schools reopen? Okay, um, so schools reopened um, last year in October for the first term, mm. and there were measures put in place. We all you know some schools, some classes where it was a phased resumption for some schools. Some schools had um, their exam classes resumed first before other classes resumed. And the government tried to put in place um, non-pharmaceutical measures such as social distancing, wearing of masks, hand washing stations, and all that. So yes, the government put in place those measures. So what I think is it needs to be reinforced before kids go back to school, in my opinion. I think it is best that um, teachers, other stakeholders, people who will engage with children when they resume school should actually be taught and retaught again all these measures, so social distancing, hand washing techniques, and putting in place these as physical um, spots where they will be used. And of course, if possible, putting in place um, virtual learning where possible or a phased resumption, um, in my opinion. Yeah. Now, um, as a public health um, physician, what advice can you give parents, teachers and the general public? What steps, what measures would you advise parents and the teachers to take on their own to help control the spread of the COVID-19? For parents, um, parents need to be very watchful. Parents need to um, ensure these measures are kept at home. And also for themselves, when they go out to their workplaces, everybody needs to be kept. So whether a parent or not a parent, for parents, especially for schools, re um, the possibility of schools reopening, they need to be extra careful. They need to try to take the time you know, to ensure that these children engage in um, engage in activities at home. I know it is tiring. I know it is a lot of work and a lot of stress for some parents, especially full-time workers. But we have to put in that sacrifice. And of course, in in talking about prevention of COVID-19, um, the preventive measures such as 
hand washing, it has to be taught, it has to be practiced and continued. And for the teachers, this has to continue as well. Social distancing, um, hand washing, we can't overemphasize it enough because as little as washing your hands will help a long way and wearing a face mask will help a long way. So that's my advice to parents and to teachers. Yeah. Now, um, given the given the fact that we're still we're just we've been hit with a second wave of the coronavirus, and at the same time schools are planning to reopen, how sustainable do you think? How long do you think this reopening is going to last, or do you think it's going to be you know uh, closed down again due to the second wave or the third wave, as some may call it? Okay. Um, so this second wave, we're seeing a second wave. We, I mean, research is still going on to know what strains are responsible for this increase number of cases and this second wave which we are seeing. And we all know that Lagos is the epicenter of COVID-19 for the country. So I think, you know, stakeholders, government, other stakeholders really need to sit down and look at it critically to be sure, do we really need to go back? Do we really need to open schools? Yes. Mm. Because on a daily, the cases are there. And Lagos, like you said, is the epicenter. So I think, we, um, as a people, we need to actually study the rise. Yeah. And actually, uh, I, would, I would suggest probably watching and waiting a while before schools open. If schools must open, they could be phased or it could be virtual where possible. That's what I think, considering with the second wave that we're in presently. Yeah. Well, we can only hope. Thank you, Dr. Ezekiel, for joining us. Thank you for taking out the time to talk to us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you as well.